been set up. Thank you, Chris. Oh, let me accept that. So I am not from Colorado, and I was really surprised when I moved up here to learn how uh, how big the scuba diving community is when there's nowhere to scuba dive. He <laughs> is a uh, scuba dive instructor here in Fort Collins. And so we'll get his presentation set up and he can tell you a bit more about that. We're diving in horse tooth. We do dive in horse tooth. So we dive in horse tooth and Carter and uh, Aurora. There's actually a plane and a bus, I think, at the bottom of Aurora Reservoir. Um, visibility in any of those places is identical. It's about this far. <laughs> so you have to be pretty comfortable uh, with your uh, claustrophobia in order to, to do that. And generally speaking, cold. On the surface, it can be, you know, 68 degrees or something on, in those places in the summer. Uh, but once you go down four or five feet, it gets it's cold quick. So are you doing the scuba school there off of uh, Howard? Do I own it? No. You know, that's an interesting story. I almost bought it once. Um, <laughs> but we're not going to tell that story today because I only have six minutes. <laughs> All right. So I might I want to turn on. Is, the, is it off? I don't know. Yeah, I think we just turn this. I don't have my readers on, so I can't tell whatever's going on. <laughs> so the down arrow. Oh, down the down arrow. arrow is the you know, I could just use these buttons because no, they're not working either. Oh. It's I broke the internet. Sorry. Yeah, the, no, my I bad. was on the wrong thing now. Hey, look at that. All right. Moves forward. So um, this is fine. We'll start, we'll start with this screen. Um, so yes, I'm Stephen Crassy. I am a scuba instructor, which is related to what I'm going to talk about today with recycled reefs. And I want to talk, uh, uh, what I would like from the group today is, uh, do you have suggestions on recycling and salvage operators in Northern Colorado that you can connect me with. Um, any marketing suggestions are always welcome. I'm not a marketer by trade, so any help is great. And if anybody has any experience crowdfunding, that would be wonderful. Um, Kickstarter, GoFundMe, whatever. And if you have experience and after I talk, you say, oh, this is the better crowdsourcing venue for this project, um, that feedback would be, would be awesome. So how many people have aquariums? Anybody? Really? <laughs> how many people like aquariums? Someone's got to like aquariums. Okay. Well, there's a reason you like aquariums. They are relaxing, obviously, cool looking, uh, but they're also good for lowering blood pressure and increasing a, 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 or making an environment more comfortable relaxing. So what we want to do with recycled reefs is have happy creatures reduce waste and happy humans. The happy humans part is what I just talked about. And now we're going to talk about how are we going to reduce waste and make happy human uh, happy creatures. If I can. Okay. Nope. I broke it again. How did they do that? It's a... Right. Yeah. So we're going to talk about five things. Our mission, e-waste, getting from waste to aquariums, the crowdfunding that we're going to do and what we're going to need and our product roadmap. So our mission is very simple. Like I said, happy creatures, reduced waste, happy humans. Um, we'll just move on from that. So how much e-waste is generated every year? Anybody have any idea? A couple yes. million pounds. Huh? Probably a couple million pounds worldwide. 50 million tons of waste every year, okay? So how much of that do you think gets recycled? I mean, we all take our recycling or our old computers and stuff to places to get recycled, how much? 10%? Five. Okay, it's actually better than that. It's 20% or less than 20%. So somewhere between your 10% and 20% is what gets recycled. Um, I don't have illusions about being able to fix that whole problem, but this is what I started to do. So my dad had a couple of old HP workstations. And I said, well, what if we took those apart? There's empty space in that thing, right? And come on, that's more taking it apart. Uh, and then we made an, an acrylic tank. Looks like that. 
painted it, cut out the side, put it on a bookshelf. In this case, these are marine aquariums, so they're salt water. And now they're basically saltwater fish tanks. Um, and I, I did that mostly as a project for myself. And then it occurred to me that most of this stuff ends up in landfills around the world. And we can make something cool out of something that's just going to get thrown away. And so I understand the target market is going to be nerds like me who think cool, computers are cool and want to put you know, them on a bookshelf. Yes, if you're asking, the USB port does work. So you can charge your phone. From your <laughs> so yes. what do we need with crowdfunding? We need fixturing and tooling. If we're going to make money at this, it's got to go fast. I've spent months making those computers and you can't do that, right? You've got to, you've got to be able to knock them down, take the guts out, recycle the guts and make a computer in, in a number of hours, not months. Now, linear months, not actual work months, but we need to streamline the process so that not only is it quick, but it doesn't have to be me doing it, right? Work on your business, not in it. Um, we need to do product development. We need to figure out, you know, what are the features that people who would be interested in something like this are going to want beyond a USB port and a, and a fish tank. And then finally, how are we going to market and promote this thing and, and produce it? So as recycled reefs, in keeping with environmental friendliness and trying to do the best we can for, for the hobby, if you're familiar with marine aquariums, you may be familiar with some of the uh, problems with the hobby. Yes, sir, five minutes. Oh, okay. Forget that. <laughs> it's, had a bad, it's had a bad rap for a number of years for reasons that are legitimate. In fact, Hawaii just is considering outlawing fishing for the reef uh, uh, hobby, which is actually good, uh, but it does impact the hobby. But getting on to this, we're going to do the recycled aquariums. We're going to move into terrarium auto control, landlocked livestock, and landlocked live stock and live rock. Okay. I don't have a lot of time to talk about what those things are. If you're interested, what this basically means is we want to aquaculture things so that they aren't pulled from the environment. We want to do them inland. In Colorado, is fine. In fact, one of the biggest macroalgae companies in the industry is in uh, Commerce City, I think, down in Denver. So it can be done. Again, this is these are my asks. Um, anybody have any questions? Did I minute? Did I finish on time? Yeah, right on time. Nice. <laughs> I have a question. So what's the size of the marketplace you're going after? I have absolutely no clue. This is a total passion project. Okay. So they're obviously the, the hobbyist market for aquariums is existent. The niche that's going to want to buy a custom computer made into a, a fish tank is smaller than that, but, uh, but it's, I, it's completely unknown. So then on the product roadmap, you had something that looked like it was beyond the aquariums. Kind of like the aquariums are kind of like the starter piece, but then you graduate to the thing. So right. what is that? What do those markets look like? Well, they all feed into that into that hobby. So the good news is they wouldn't be dependent on our aquariums. So, for example, live rock, which is basically rock with animals on it, live, um, has gone through a real metamorphosis over the years. We used to actually pull it off of live reefs. That's not done a lot anymore. A lot now is farmed, so they actually take regular rock, throw it in the ocean pull it out a few years later. And then there's some rock that actually they grow in a fish tank, but it basically just has bacteria on it and they call it live rock, which for some of us that doesn't really count. Um, but basically it goes to the aquaculturing of some of these more niche livestock elements for the hobby completely outside of the ocean environment. So let's okay. leave the ocean alone. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, you I was thinking livestock is in cows and buffalo. <laughs> Not so much. Livestock is in things that go in your fish tank. I know. I was thinking about what's, what's here. That's, that's like, yeah. So thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. That was 
kind of along the same lines, one of my first questions jumping ahead is market validation and just just like how, not not only how big the market is, but is there a market period? And I think I absolutely applaud that it's a passion project. What I encourage you to do is go, there's there's a bunch of still independent pet stores that are around that do aquarium and, and fish sales and things like that. I would encourage you to try and go talk to some of the independents and see if they would let you even just set up as a demo there and just see what kind of interest, if there's any interest from foot traffic, if there's any interest, because it's kind of like you said, it's really a niche product, right? Yep. And any other space like that, you think you can get your product out on display and get some feedback before you start going down this path of like, you know, crowdfunding and sourcing and tooling, like make sure that someone actually wants to buy your product. A hundred percent. And so there's a couple of things I'll mention on that. First of all, um, we are building our next seven boxes right now. Um, there is Alpine Koi and Reef out on Mulberry. There is the Fish Crew out on Harmony. Those are the only two independent fish stores in North, in Fort, Fort Collins. Uh, Loveland and uh, Greeley may have some as well. Uh, we also have reptile uh, stores. There's tails and something, uh, scales and tails. Uh, and then there's a new one that just opened up uh, over at Drake and Shield. So we do have a few options for that exact thing. Um, and actually, it's interesting that you brought up the crowdfunding. I look at the crowdfunding actually as a market validator in a certain sense. So if, I, if we put together a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe or both and nobody funds it, that will give us a no money to go forward because we're not going <laughs> to pour personal money into something that's not going to make money later. And secondly, um, uh, it will show us that there's not enough interest in, in the product itself. So uh, definitely uh, appreciate that. Yes, Bill. Yeah, I was thinking on the supply side, right? You got a supply demand side. If, 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 if these boxes are all the old towers, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I suspect there's millions, tens of millions of towers in people's attics and, and yep. garages mm -hmm. and whatever. I, I don't know how to test that, right? And, and uh, you know, and what do they what do they do with those things? So I, I suspect that if you bring those to a recycling place, you have to pay, right? Mm -hmm. well, Sometimes I suspect sometimes that's why, that's, the, I suspect that's why they're sitting in garages, you know. <laughs> yep. So I don't know. It's that whole ecosystem of and and there's an the, between salvage companies where we can get a group of them at a time, or large companies getting rid of. Uh, uh, a certain number of them or whatever. I think there is an invitation to the community that we can start putting out to say, hey, if you have this, we'll take it. We're not gonna charge you. We're not gonna pay you, but we're not gonna charge you, but we'll come get it. I suspect you get a lot of them. <laughs> and we get we get some some computer chassis. So yeah. We, we got Brian uh, Yeah, on. we got somebody. Who? Brian. Brian? Nice presentation. What I would say is you need to move through your problem quicker. Because I don't think we really got your full product piece and your solution piece. Um, and you didn't mention reptile type things until the Q&A. Like terrariums are any number of things, et cetera, et cetera. So I think your presentation was a good start. And I recognize it's your first one. It could be tighter. Um, you made a comment on crowdfunding that I want to respond to, which was, that's our market validator. That's backwards. The successful Kickstarters have crowds and have markets because they have a following. One of the ones that I paid attention to last year was a company that got a license from Nickelodeon to do a role-playing game for a cartoon. The cartoon was 10 years old. It had a fan base. The company doing it had a fan base and had successes before. Nickelodeon's not small. And it almost broke every record there was. Like you don't have success on Kickstarter without a crowd. So, it's not your validation tool, it's your, we have the market and they're already fans of us. 
Okay, awesome. Thank you. John, that means I have more work to do. Yes, a couple quick things uh, for to get some market analysis. You can go to the uh, library on the, over at Front Range Community. I think it's Mark West, and he'll look up stuff for you to see if you know what what is your market type. Mm -hmm. or you know how many people are in the market you know is there a big demand and everything and that's all for free there too and then talk to pete over at i point uh computers because they do a uh tower for flowers every year so oh, it might be a good partnership thank you, thank you yes, um i'm kind of wondering oh, he actually if, flowers for i'm kind of wondering if um if it's not just a niche market for computer geeks who happen to like aquariums or terrariums like for me if i was going to have one if my option was to buy something new or something reused i would go for the reused not because i'm like oh cool i love computers but oh wow this isn't in a landfill mm -hmm. um so i think expanding your thinking in that way is just like anybody who doesn't want to make something new when they could use something used Great, that's great feedback, thank you. Yes. Yeah, there might be an opportunity to have a, a, a kit that you could sell to people to let them do it themselves, the DIY, right? Yeah, we, we, we're actually working through, the part of this is getting through the process of putting them together. One of the challenges is none of these chests are the same size. Yeah. Unless you buy a, an ATX tower or something that's very specific uh, or very standardized, like a DIY tower, um, all the Dells, HPs, uh, gateways, you know, whatever, all of those guys at very, at, in the early stages, they were all very similar, but now they are all very customized. So they, we kind of have to take them apart and figure out, we literally have to take them apart and measure the inside dimensions and cut the acrylic to the right size. So it's a little bit challenging from that perspective. Yes, sir. The, the aquarium people I know are do-it-yourselfers mm -hmm. one turned a piano into an aquarium and so he just watches tons of youtube videos on, on other hobbyists doing the same thing have yeah. you combined your your equipment and your expertise with video making on the assembly of these and like walking people through that we haven't yet that's part of what we're going to do in the lead up to kind of talking to brian's point in our lead up to our our kickstarter campaign um is to release video, Instagram, whatever, um, about the process itself and uh, why it's important or why it actually can at least, you know, help a fraction of the environment. Um, but yes, we're going to start creating uh, media around the whole concept. I mean, like and, how to, you know, how yeah, to do it yourself. Literally how to do it, you know, uh, do it yourself. Yeah. Hey, Steve, sorry, I think this is the beginning. Uh, I, I forget what you, if you said, are these going in the towers or are they going in the monitors? Right now we're doing them in the towers. towers okay. I have a couple of monitors. Monitors are a little tough because the water volume that you can put in a new L LCD or, or whatever monitor is, you know, if you only use the monitor itself, there's no water volume, which might be okay for a very small fish, but you can't clean it. Right. And so it becomes a problem as a hobbyist. And so then you have to say, okay, we're going to totally remove the back of the aquarium or the back of the monitor and put in a, you know, a deeper tank, and then you have to support it and it becomes more of a challenge. So right now it's just the towers. Okay. Yeah. That led to my next question, I guess, is the cleaning. How do you, cleaning is the worst part of fish tanks. It really yep. is the, the scraping the glass, yep. the water changes. Is that so, something that you can, is functional with your towers? There, maybe if I can go backwards, but maybe I can't. I'm, I just need to get to a picture here real quick. So if you look at this picture right here, uh, the, top are the tops are open and they have to be some light gets in, yep. right? So you can reach in and, and scrape the side of the tank. Okay. So they're, cl they're cleanable. Um, before the marketing question, I I'm curious where you would sell this. Or are you just going to have a website or have like an Etsy account or like I where, think right now we're arguing buying? about that internally. My son and I are doing this project together and arguing is not the right word, but we're, <laughs> we're looking at, you know, Etsy, Etsy has this feel to me of not being company enough and more like we're going to handcraft these in our basement forever. And that's not what I'm going to do. 
Um, so we're looking at other like Shopify or something where we can get most of the catalog built in, but they're going to be, every single one's going to be different, right? So, you know, even if we template them out, every one is going to be a unique thing. Well, and your initial buyers might be the ones who like the idea of these being put together by hand in the basement, right? They might, yeah. And, so you, and they'll always so be put together by hand. So yeah. it's always going to be something handcrafted. Maybe above ground. Right. Maybe above ground. Yeah. Yeah. Following along with the handcrafted idea, where, where do you see yourself this falling in price point compared to buying it? That is a really great question. We have no idea. <laughs> um, there's a point at which I wouldn't buy one. Mm -hmm. And if it's more expensive than I would pay, then we probably won't go that high and we have to figure out a way to make them cheaper or we'll have to say this isn't going to work. Right. I mean, it is possible for something to be cool and not work. Right. And so, Been there. That's, yeah. that's, you know, I, I've got a patent for something that's cool that doesn't work as a product and it's just, it is what it is. So that's, um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. So something else that you might consider, I know that along the lines of what Leandro was saying, um, there are, I've noticed are more and more organizations that are, uh, I'll say, curating um, recycled products in such a way that are transformed into something new, which is really what you're talking about, that might create some additional ways to reach a market that's tailored to what you need versus, you know, I, I certainly understand your piece around Etsy or the Shopify, you can't have to go out and find those people, but these kinds of organizations might be a way to step into finding that market as well. That's great feedback, thank you. Yes. Switch, is that her name, her business? Make the switch, Take a charge. switch, no, the girl who has like the Amazon oh, marketplace. Oh yeah, I'd have to go She back. has the marketplace, the online marketplace for, Custom store, like like people. she's done the legwork to find people. Who oh, is that Karen? Fritz. Simple switch. Well, simple switch. Simple switch. Okay. That way, said Brian. Yeah. Simple switch. That sounds. And then there was the uh, Renee who was doing the guitars, taking guitars, right, cracking mm -hmm. them up, and then selling them as art. So I don't know what marketplace she found okay she's because cool. that's art so yeah she's going through still, galleries oh is she yeah, yeah. Okay. so simple switch is more like an amazon for products that are made sustainably or made by people who are making living wages and organic and that kind of thing so that might be a place not etsy that you could sell well, okay. awesome all right Stephen, we'll send the chat you. Yeah, there's some stuff oh. in the chat, so we'll we'll grab that uh, at the end. But cool. thanks for sharing the the new passion project. With us. This is exciting. Thank you. Uh, we'll take a quick break, grab some more coffee. Uh, those online will put you in a breakout room so you can uh, chat, and we'll be back in a couple minutes. Yeah, nice to meet you. Cha -cha -cha -cha. So, what do you do? How about <laughs> Don? Okay. You know how they would dump so long uh -huh. And then at first, I was Good. We went to Florida last uh, was on the program. Well, I was I mean, on the desktop. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we can make here. Oh, really? Because I was like, I Those are huge and actually. Yeah, I am. From our builds, just throwing them in a bucket with. Because I bought charge
Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna we'll get going with John's presentation. You all can have a seat. Sorry to interrupt the conversation. We've got one more, one more presentation. I got where it was. It was over there. Uh, I went to one contemporary time. All right, I won't do it. We'll just talk. Hey, commanding Jana. All right, well, we've got John Barry here for an update on 1472 fire protection. Uh, fun fact about John, he is the last volunteer firefighter in Laporte, and yep. his mom was the first female firefighter in Colorado. Yep. So he, he, he lives this stuff. <laughs> John, if you'll be on this side, it'll be. Yep, I'm just waiting for you. All right, it's all yours. <laughs> all right, so with this here, this today, this is an informative presentation. That's all it is. Because what I'm going to do with this presentation is I'm going to voice over it. And when I go to trade shows, it's going to be playing in the background. So what we're looking for today is the clarity and make sure everything flows. Um, start off with, here's the team we have, me, Josh, Rich, Dave Pearson, who... Between those two guys have over 70 years in the fire business. So we have plenty of experience with the team. And of course we have Mike on the business side here. Of course. <laughs> so, you know, you think about it. I mean, you're out with the family having fun. It's a beautiful day. And then all of a sudden this happens. You get the uh, text message that says, you're being notified of a wildfire in your area. What do you think your first response is? Oh, crap! <laughs> you know, you, you know, your blood pressure just shot through the roof. And, uh, you know, like these two there, I mean, yeah, that's a little <laughs> extreme. But, you know, for some people, it's like, oh, no, you know, because the stress starts going in. And reality is, is you got time to go get your stuff. You know, but do you have your checklist of stuff already ready to go? And I, you know, 70% of the people just grab and fly. Because on the way home, this is what you're thinking about right here. Is that wall of flame coming towards your house? You know, you get home, you got to get Fido, Miss Kitty, you know, some pictures, baby clothes. And of course, you need this right here the insurance papers, and you're praying that it's up to date. Because 60% of people, once they get insurance, don't go in every year and get it updated. And that's what's happening with some of the people down in the Marshall Fire right now is that uh, money that the insurance isn't coming, covering, guess where it comes out of? Their back pocket. So, you know, and you're heading to the evacuation and you're sitting there going, Please, Lord, spare my house, you know, you know, and the stress of starting over. I mean, think about it. That's pretty, you know, you have the world on your shoulders. You're like, you know, so like this, you're walking like this going, oh, no. You know, so with no protection, this is what it looks like. Starting all over. The 1472. Look, you got your nice house, got lawn. I mean, yeah, it's a little black out here, but it'll grow back. <laughs> but you're going home. You know, you're not like this going, oh, crap, is there anything left? 98%. Anyone have an idea what that 98% is? So the 98% is... is Without 1472 protection, your house burns down. I mean, there is a 2% chance that God will say, I will spare your house. And I have seen it with my own eyes. Where we went back through a wildfire and there's houses not even touched. But 98% of them are toast. And with the uh, 1472 protection, you have 98% protection. You know, here we're starting new property we're doing in fact uh finally it looks like i will have my first contract and this is it right here up in uh saratoga wyoming 
and we're going into the value you know, looking for the defensible space area which is decent except for right here on the back we got to increase that area because we both do a defensible area come on ah, here we go here's a non-defensible area if the fire department sees this in a fire they're not even going to try I mean, look at it. You got a fence here. A lot of people don't understand when they hook a fence to their house, that's the easiest way for a fire to get to your house. They'll just follow it, at least like water. Go straight to the house. And with all the trees and stuff here, you have the canopy, all that's on fire. My system would have a hard time protecting that just the way it is. Thus, that's why we put in a defensible area, which is anywhere between 150 feet to 300 feet around the property. So like right here, perfect defensible area. Now fire protection system here is a beautiful thing. With our fire protection system, you get 50% of, you know, up to 50% insurance reduction 24-7. Um, we take care of everything for you and you don't have to be home for it. And the system is a, uh, Two stage system, which is a, I call it the slime system, which is fire gel system, which you can eat. You know, a lot of people who know. Now, I should have grabbed some and showed it to you guys, but it's perfectly biodegradable. You can eat it, wash it off, and then you also have the water section too. So, you know, I mean, that's why we say, you know, get 1472 because let's prevent this from happening. I mean, think about it. You're, you're going through a rubble trying to find those heirlooms that you couldn't fit in the car. You know, and let's also prevent this too. Anyone have an idea what that 12 to 24 months means? Rebuild. Rebuild. Rebuilding your life. Holding on to every receipt you have. You know, people in the camera fire right now, some of them are almost back to normal, but there's still a lot of people. I mean, you know, that 24 months might actually be longer. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I'm new, what's uh -huh. 1472? So 1472, we are a wildfire property protection business. Okay. I designed a uh, sprinkler system that goes on the exterior uh, of your structures. So either business or home, it also goes out to the property. Like what this shows here, this is the effect. Whoops, right, Oop, back, ah, slow down. Not right there. So, so that's what you should put right up front in your presentation when, when you're talking about your, right. your, your video or whatever. But I was going for an emotional first. Yeah, yeah, no this. doubt. But but if people don't know, understand what it is, or it's like, yeah, I was waiting, well, like, well, what is it, what is it? Um, this looks like Santa Cruz Mountains. We were just up there last month. Yeah. We lived out there, and there is a house or two that looks just like that, where it's all by itself. But this was amongst the redwoods, right? Yep. The redwoods even burned. It was pretty yep, bad. It did. But it looked black all around there. So it was, yeah, sad. Yeah, um, so if you're going to make a video, people are going to be walking by, you need to hit them quickly. And I know that you had six minutes here, but I think, you know, to, well, since, it's, it's, since Jan is not here, way too much time on the problem, the emotion, like we get that. And I think to what Beth is saying is the slide that said, like, these are your choices, this comparison with the other one, the, mm -hmm. um, the no 1472 or, or whatever switching that into two, making that two slides. So having no protection and having that lady. And then the next flash is this one, 1472 protection. And then having what 1472 protection is mm -hmm. with the defensible area, the gel, like those like five, five or six slides. All you need to define the problem is that picture right there. No protection, 12 to 24 months to rebuild, 14, next slide. 1472 protection and okay. then the things that it provides you don't need to show the non-defensible space you just put defensible space slime and whatever you know 24 7 monitoring coverage mm -hmm. that's okay. it and that's what's playing on loop because if you're at a trade show they can't hear what you're saying anyhow right 
Yeah, that's, so like the and that's, that's what I was trying to do with this first presentation is just get a story told. It's through the pictures. Right on four slides, boom, 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 yep. boom, boom, boom three slides, something like that. Because I, when I originally put, put this together, I said I had a broke out my way when I got a <laughs> yeah. shrink. The thing, too, is you're going to be talking to people up here. You're going to be right. at a trade show. So mm -hmm. you're, you're going to want to be able to talk and you want to be able to have a conversation while this is running in the yeah. background. And so this picture here will be the best picture for it. Yeah. That's it. That, I mean, that's your problem, right? Yep. There. Something that came to my mind um, was propane tanks. Yep. That's the first thing I think of. And I don't, I didn't, I was looking at your pictures. And I'm like, I don't see a propane tank or how it might have been protected. And maybe that's not part of this presentation. But well, we do protect, pro oh, yeah, that's that's our main protection right there. Because if that goes, yeah. <laughs> but, but no, we, we got a system that will go on the propane, around the propane tank. Sorry, okay, so, so that would be the next slide. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If that could be seen, because that was the first thing I was like, oh boy. Yeah, that's that's one of the first things we look at when you go up there. But you know, we also have some, you know, like here, you don't know, have a propane tank. But I've had a few future clients maybe um, mm -hmm. have propane tanks. Yes, but sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, and then, do you also help with the insurance process? So after you get it set up. You we help you with that. We are, okay. I got insurance people that will we'll sit down with you. Okay. Um, I, I agree with condensing it down, and the, the emotional part is, is good, but like like you said, like this one one image, right. that, that says as much as I need to think. Um, I think another opportunity for you to, to touch on is the increasing rate of extreme weather events. Stay away from terms like climate change and things that are going to be polarizing, but like you can be very objective about extreme weather events are increasing. And it's not a matter of if a wildfire is going to happen, it's a matter of when and where. Like you know. those those things, like you just take that that off the table, right? Like we all agree that there's going to be wildfires this season. We all live here as part of living on the front range and in any number of other areas. You know, there's some there's some stuff I left out of this presentation. That I'll put into another one, i.e., we're talking about the extreme weather. You know, back when um, I was growing up here, the average wildfire was eight days. Now it's thirty-seven. Um, another one is uh, it's no longer three, four-month season; it's a year-round. I mean, look here in Colorado alone. As much as I hate to say it, we're turning into California right and left with wildfires being year round. I think those are important points to highlight of why your solution is important. Right, and that's something we talked to with that, but for this here. Mike. So I'd agree wholeheartedly that I, I think the news media have made us all aware of the problem big time. And so I'd spend more a lot more time on your solution. Okay. okay. Do. I mean, we, we're all, <laughs> We're, we're hearing the emotional part yeah, of everybody right. else. Yeah. 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 Stephen? Just real quick um, to, to kind of add to what Leandro was talking about. I, I think since you're talking specifically about this being something at a trade show, mm -hmm. the more dynamic it can be, the more as a walker through a trade show, I'm mm -hmm. going to pay attention to it. So the two things I would say is subtitle it. That's getting easier and easier. So when you go through and you do your audio narration, Go ahead and put subtitles on the video that are running when you're doing the when you have it on the TV. And then the other thing is replace some of these photos with videos. You can get stock videos on any right. number of stock websites, and that will just give it more animation yep. and be more uh, engaging for, for people. So that'd be my only key. Okay. Do you have visuals of your system mm -hmm. for in process, yeah. like firing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, tailor it to your audience too. If it's a trade show, are these homeowners walking by or contractors? All three. <laughs> that was cheap. I know, but there's all <laughs> <laughs> I put the third one said, okay, who's gonna figure it out? <laughs> all right, one last question, comment, Jen? Yes, Jen. Um, just along the lines of what everybody else is saying, there are two slides in here that were all text. One was everybody who's in it right? Your very first slide. Yeah. And nobody's going to read that. Right. But I do think I, I might be. I said that. I just said that for 
But I do think that you should have your faces because yeah. there's a way in which like, if I'm, if I'm walking by the trade show and I see the faces of the people on the team yeah. and then I see you there and connect that with the right. picture, that enhances credibility. I know who right. I'm talking to because you made, I mean, I mean it's illogical, right? Like you right. made the presentation, of course, you're facing <laughs> on it, but it, but it, but it creates trust right. that I, we see that. Cause I thought about that too. And I was like, I didn't see enough time. To get everyone yeah, to but definitely do the pictures have have those there and then the other one you put all the advantages of your system i know and i i almost think and that's, that's what like, everyone is saying is like we can't we're not going to uh, read that we need to see i know it. and i and i went back and forth with that too because i was like do i want to throw it to straight pictures so like, yeah just do like you had that picture that said insurance and then like yeah. to steven's point you can just have a subtitle that says can reduce premiums by 50 percent oh, yeah. With an asterisk that right below that that yeah. you can't read fast. That, that picture there is a right. And then you know the insurance company. Right. Well, and then like we help. Yeah. But just use those pictures to get a get across the point. Like take that insurance picture and yeah. that's a slide. And I was that was there just for people to, you know, what do you have to grab? But it doesn't mean to, you don't need right. the what you have to grab. It's oh yeah, it's an, like yeah. everybody well. I assume everybody knows that like your house burns down. It's an insurance nightmare. It is. So you, that's just a slide like reduces premiums by 50% or. Okay. All right, John. Thank you. All right, we will. Thanks. All right, wrapping things up. Who's had a win this week? 